children around the world. That was a big one. We saw many countries um, put forth entries in that space. Another um, big trend was gender equality, uh, men and women. Fascinating, fascinating stuff. Um, another area that had a ton of entries this year was climate change. And the reason why I'm saying this year is because I'm a student of CAN, like I know many of you are, and I look to see what won, you know, what wins every year. And there definitely was a lot more of a climate change and then in the United States there were quite a few entries on gun control, which um, I hadn't seen in years gone by, but I, I, I mean I think this was a reflection of the times. And then the final trend was um, family, just about uh, preserving and and making sure that family remains an important part of everyday life, no matter what country you are in the world. The companies that differentiate themselves are leading with a couple of key factors, and one of those being creative, right? I mean, <coughs> ostensibly, we become a commodifying industry if we aren't able to differentiate ourselves with big ideas, executed well, translated across a wide range of media. We're going to do live test demos. Was that new? Not at all, right? We've been seeing live stuff on TV for, for many years. Right? Think about like in the 70s and 80s, you watch Evil and Evil. We tune in for an hour to watch him jump over a bunch of trucks and, and crush himself. Then in the 90s, we watch David Blaine, right, freeze himself in a block of ice, stand on a pillar, hold his breath. And you're like, we're all watching for an hour just waiting to see if he freezes to death or gets crushed or something like that. So, I mean, I don't think this is a new tactic, but what's so compelling to me again, it gets back to execution too, right? We, we start to talk about it a little bit, and I think that's a critical differentiating factor. Not only did you have a great idea that was entertaining and smart and on brand and actually spoke to the product attributes, but it was executed in such a compelling way. And I think that's a big place for PR agencies and actually creative agencies to continue pushing the boundaries. Execution is very meaningful in terms of the translation of these ideas. We got into this discussion about our creative, and we had uh, John Mescal, if you guys know, he's the creative mastermind by Don't Waste to Die, which is the most decorated campaign that won a can last year. I'm uh, really getting into the discussion about with millennials, it's not our creative, I mean, it's not their creative, it's our creative. Millennials want to be involved in their creativity behind campaigns, and that's really fascinating. Our research really showed that, too, is they want to be brought into the process. So this idea of co-creation and collaborative social innovation uh, is really sort of coming out of, of uh, the creative minds, and I think it's, it's fantastic for millennials. We sort of moved on from the idea that millennials are a, a, a separate generation and start to think more about, in 2015, them taking over the, the mantle of greatest purchasing power in a generation from baby boomers, right? This is your general market, right? So get it right now, or you're wrong for the next 40 years. You know, from our perspective, like music is the original social network, and so music's always been a huge part of how people associate with brands, and um, we often see spikes in music related to TV. So, for example, I don't know if we're going to look at the Volvo uh, live demos, or the, so the, the, uh, the Enya track that, that uh, is running throughout the John Lennon and Andy's. Actually, um, it's a 15 year old song, and when they choked it with the Hot 100, uh, following that. Uh, uh, closely a lot of that, that work hit. So we've always seen associations between good music and, and great work. But the one that stood out to be the creating content at the, at the speed of culture was talked about the agency-client relationship. And I thought that was what was interesting because they talked about the speed in which they had to react, right? And they were, there was another part about saying sort of get rid of briefs, that briefs weren't important. And of course, I think that, that makes a lot of us shudder the thought of that. But what they were really saying is that you're so ingrained and that your connection with your clients becomes so fluid that you no longer need new briefs all the time, that you're actually able to create and develop work based on mutual trust, mutual understanding, and, and a process that's put in place to help accelerate that. I think that's a pretty interesting shift in terms of what agencies and clients can do together. So I thought it was, I mean, it was really exciting.